Hi everybody. Okay, so today is going to be my labor and delivery video. Um, hopefully I'll try to keep it short because a lot did happen in that short amount of time. Um, first of all, let me start off by saying thank you everyone to all the well wishes and congratulations on um, Malachi's birthday, I guess. Um, <laughs> he is absolutely wonderful. I adore him. He's the cutest baby ever, like you've ever seen in your life. And I know all parents said it about their kids, but no, seriously, mine is like the cutest. Okay, yeah. Um, <laughs> no, but he is a really sweet baby. He's a really good baby, too. Um, he only cries when he's hungry and when he's wet, but then he wants me to hold him all the other time, too. So, but whatever, he's a newborn. And then the boys absolutely love him, they're always kissing him and they refer to him as baby. They don't give him, they haven't given him a full name, they don't call him Malachi, they call him baby. And whenever he cries or grunts or moans, they're like, Mom, baby's crying. Mom, baby's crying. So I was like, okay, thanks, guys. I'll take it from here. But no, uh, we just love him, and he is absolutely beautiful. And that's my little man, his little fat self. Um, but yeah, labor and delivery video. Oh, also, um, I got an overwhelming response with my breastfeeding engorgement video. So I'll definitely do a follow-up video because I got a lot of questions, personal, uh, some, some people personally emailed me and then of course questions on the video. So I'm going to answer them full out in the video separately from this. So that way everybody can get exposed to it or get whatever the knowledge you need from it. Um, I got a lot of good questions. So yeah, I'll definitely do a video for that. Um, but in the meanwhile, check out my, I'll link it all below to that video too. Um, my breastfeeding video, as far as like overall breastfeeding one-on-one, -on -one, um, tips and tricks. And then, um, these are old videos, about two years old. Um, breast pumps. I have a video specifically dedicated to breast pumps and what type of brands I have, which ones I would recommend. Um, all different videos for that. But let's go ahead and get back to the meat and potatoes of this video, which is my labor and delivery story. Okay, so as you all know, you saw my pregnancy vlog, my last pregnancy vlog when I was telling everyone that um, I went into false labor Wednesday, that last Wednesday, the Wednesday before I gave birth to him. And I gave birth to him early Monday morning, like 2.50 a.m. So that Wednesday I went in and they sent me back because I wasn't ready yet. So um, that same day, I went to a doctor's appointment and my doctor I've been seeing all throughout my pregnancy did a membrane scrape. Essentially what she did was she took, she inserted her two fingers, put them near my cervix and kind of turned the cervix around, I guess to try to stimulate it. And it's supposed to make your water break and all that good stuff so what ended up happening was which is very painful by the way she, i'm like girl what you doing like she's skinny like me her fingers are all skinny she's like all up in there like <laughs> ow, ow ma'am ow could you not be a little bit more gentle please okay but no um so i got that done so that friday um i walked around the mall the whole mall trying to get my water to break no luck there. So Saturday, I went out, and that's when you saw the black dress video, because I think I bought that dress that day I was walking in the mall. So <laughs> I was like, I'm going to wear this. It's cute. It's sexy. I got in that dress, didn't I? Couldn't tell me nothing. But um, anyways, getting back to the story. Eli, I'll be right there. Okay, Elijah, I'll be right there. Oh, I'll be there in a minute. Go have a seat. Okay, so... um. Oh yeah, so yeah, that Saturday I went walking around the promenade. I got some ice cream, got some something to eat, did a little bit of more shopping. I did, um, <laughs> but it was Bath and Body Works. It wasn't closed or anything, and still no luck. Sunday, because I didn't have my kids all weekend, so Sunday we drive down to Long Beach, pick up our kids, and I keep picking up my hair, don't I? Sorry. Okay, so Sunday we drive down to Long Beach, spend all day in Long Beach. Started coming back here around 5 this evening. It takes an hour to get from my house to Long Beach and vice versa. So I get home at 6 and I'm feeling contractions. I'm like, oh, this, this is crazy. Because I anticipated on having my baby in Long Beach, but I ended up not. I ended up having him where I live at. And the reason I wanted to have him in Long Beach is so my in-laws can take my other children. But we'll get into that. Long story short. Six o'clock, I went into active labor, like instantly. 7.30 hit, I'm like, oh my God, we need to go to the hospital now. <laughs> so we Googled the nearest hospital um, here. So I went there and I got in there around 8.30. 
sat me on the table, I was eight centimeters. Okay, so that's why that's how long I was holding my contractions. My water had not broken yet. So 8:30 comes around, we're eight centimeters. I have my kids with me. I tell Big Omar to call the in-laws, and they tell me that they're not gonna come. They said they're not gonna make it. So I ended up having Malachi by myself with the nurses because Omar had to go home with the kids because they're two, four, and six are not gonna sit all night at a um at a hospital. You know, it was during, Amir had to go to school the next day. It was just a lot going on. And the kids were acting ugly in the waiting room. So he ended up taking them home. And so I ended up having Malachi by myself. Um, yeah, I don't even want to talk about it. But they showed it, take their behind to the casino the next day. But we ain't going to tell nobody. Whatever. I, I'm a little salty about that. But anyways, <laughs> moving on. Um, cause he's perfect. He's here. No, no harm was done. No harm, no foul, whatever. So he, um, 830 hits. I'm like, cool. I probably got 40 to 50 minutes before, um, he's here. My water's starting to break in the next 10 to 20 minutes. I already know I'm ready. So I was holding these contractions in and everybody knows that once your water breaks, the contractions are like a hundred times more intense. Okay. It feels like somebody is taking your uterus and just stretching it like Play-Doh and kneading it and just doing this and then pulling it apart, pulling it back together and then doing this to it. Controlling your contractions or surviving your contractions is really challenging, especially after your, um, your water breaks. So 8.30 rolls around. They put me in a room by myself. Okay. 30 minutes to no, 45 minutes goes by. And then my water breaks. So I'm like, good. My water breaks. It's going to come. Well, my water broke. It like gushed. It hit the floor. I heard leaking. I'm like, did I pee on myself? And the nurse is like, no, it's okay. Your water just broke. My, I let go fluid the first like five times, including the, the time my water broke initially. Meaning each time I had a really heavy contraction, fluid was pushed out of my body. And it was so much fluid that the doc, like they had to keep changing my pads that was under me. Um, and I remember my doctor saying that you had a lot of flu. I gained a lot of weight the last week of my pregnancy. Um, so I had a lot of fluid. And the fluid was just coming out, coming out, coming out, coming out. And it kind of scared me a little bit because I had never experienced that before. Because once the water breaks, you know, it was like, okay, it's smooth sailing from there. But my body kept releasing the fluid every time I had a really hard contraction. So that mixed with me being there by myself, um, not having any family support with me. Um, just me and the nurses battling it out and trying to do this naturally. That didn't happen. Okay. I ended up getting an epidural. So, so from the time I got the epidural at 830, I mean, 1130 that night. So I went three whole hours, um, after my water broke of these really hard, intense contractions. And he still didn't come. I was still at eight and a half centimeters when I got my epidural. Okay. <sighs> I I got the epidural because I knew that me, I would exhaust my body if I kept trying to um, battle or or endure the, the contractions that were so, so, so intense. So I ended up getting the epidural. And um, because I got it so late, um, it didn't take the 100% full effect. So I could still feel everything. I could still feel the contractions. They just weren't so intense as, as they were before I got it. Um, yeah, I, I, I was like, no, I can't, three hours, I'm gonna be so exhausted. I'm not even gonna have enough energy to push if I keep battling this. So 11.30 hits and then hour goes by. Okay, hour goes by and um, I hear them acting the fool. Hour goes by, it went up like a half a centimeter. It took me, I didn't have until 2.50 a.m. Like around 2.30 is when I got to the full 10 centimeters and I was able to push. Um, and you know, once you get epidural, it does slow up your contractions. It slows up the natural process of your body. So that's why it took a little bit longer for me to have the baby. But, um, he came out and then the doctor, cause his head came out first, of course. And then the umbilical cord was wrapped around his neck twice. So the doctor cut it, cut the umbilical cord while his head was still out. His whole body was not yet. So he cut it twice and then which should really didn't matter because my, uh, big Omar wasn't there anyway to <laughs> cut the umbilical cord. So, or no one for that matter, not even nobody was there, but me. So the doctor went ahead and cut the umbilical cord and, um, two more pushes, his shoulder was out and then he was all the way out. And I was like, thank you, Jesus. Oh, oh girl, that was hard. <laughs> and they were laughing at me. I was like, thank you, Jesus. 
I, I could not. He was so big. They picked him up, and then, of course, they put him on the scale because he wasn't crying or anything. He it, it took him a minute to start crying. And then once he did, I was like, okay, good. He's okay. And then they could see. What do you want? Have a seat. I'll be there in a minute. Don't call my name no more. Now, you've been hard-headed. Excuse me. Sorry. I mean, I, whenever I try to do something, I can't even pee in the potty without somebody going, what you doing? Hey, come on now. Sit down. Goodness. What was I saying? Yes. He um, he cried a little bit, which gave me relief, but I wasn't able to hold him until 40 minutes later because they weighed him. They you know they wipe him off. And they, he didn't even get a bath, though. Um, you know, just wipe off the afterbirth. And then they weighed him. He was eight pounds to ounces. So he was a happy baby. You saw the picture of him smiling next to his little weight. And um, when she told me that, I was like, what you say? I said, no, he's not eight pounds to ounces. Your machine is broken. You're not going to try that again. So, no, she weighed him again. And lo and behold, it said eight pounds to ounces. And I was like, oh, because all of my children, like the first two were six pounds each. The last one was 713, almost eight pounds. And this one was eight pounds, 10 ounces. And then he was 21 inches long. And all three of my other children were only 19 and a half. That's it. But Malachi is 21 inches long. And I was like, oh my goodness, girl. I don't know where he come from. He's a, he's a, he's a jerk or not, baby. <laughs> but um. anyway, so they noticed that he wasn't breathing on his own as well as he should have been. So... It, they were cleaning him out, giving him oxygen, sucking all the fluid out of his body. And it took them 40 minutes to make sure he was set before they brought him over to me. And we did the skin to skin contact, which is something they encourage nowadays, which is fine by me. Um, essentially, what you do is just put your, they leave the baby in the diaper and they lay him on your chest. And he just sits there and he just takes in the warmth and energy from your body, I guess. But um, so we did that and he was fine. And then they moved me to a new room. And then um, before they moved me, I breastfed him, of course, just to I put what I did was um, I squeezed a little colostrum amount and put it around his lips to see what he would do and put a little bit on his tongue. And then he was sucking for it. So then he ended up nursing on both breasts um, before we went into the other room where my room, where I would be staying at for the for the um, rest of the couple of days. So we did that. And then when I got in the other room. Um, the doctor was telling me that I had an infection because I had developed a fever doing the whole thing. And I ended up throwing up right before he came. Like, I was like, I got to throw up. And I threw up water and peaches because that was the last thing I had. And so, um, and then I had a high fever. He didn't have a fever. I did. So the doctor was saying that's a sign of infection. So they gave me an uh, antibiotic every eight hours in vitro. In vitro. Is that a word? I don't know if that's the right thing. Do my IV. They gave me antibiotic. They gave me fluid. And then they gave me the Pitocin. The Pitocin is the medicine that makes your uterus contract back to his pre-pregnancy state and um they gave me two bags of pitocin and then every eight hours they gave him the antibiotic and then in between that they would just give me iv fluid just fluids 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 so that being said um uh yeah the epidural i had to get that um but then here's the other kicker because i had the infection in my uterus or in my body they figure it was in my uterus um i didn't get a tubal sterilization so no i my, my tubes are not tied and the next morning, like early, I had him at 2.50, and around 7 or 8 o'clock that morning, um, the doctor came in. Because I, right, when I, at two, right when I had them, I told him I want my tubal. So they said, okay, you can't eat anything until the doctor talks to you about it. So I didn't eat. I was dog, I was hungry because I didn't have dinner that night. 7, 8 o'clock rolls around. I'm still hungry. And the doctor comes in and says, I don't think it's a good idea to do the tubal today because you still have the, cause you had the infection and we're giving you antibiotics. So we'll see. How it looks like tomorrow and we'll see if we'll go from there so the next day comes and the doctor's like it's a new doctor because at the, the hospital i go to you get whoever's on call you don't see the person you saw throughout your whole pregnancy you whoever's there they'll take care of it which is like okay i guess but um that doctor also said i'm not confident in giving you um a tubal sterilization with you have just having getting over an infection because we don't want anything else to happen to it i'm like okay fine so i left the hospital tubal sterilization free i still got my tubes and they're they're working okay <laughs> so um one of the options the doctors um gave me she was like of course you can go on pills you can go on the depot shop we can do the assure the assure is when you don't have to do the they just stick the two little springs 
inside your fallopian tubes and it takes six months to lock. It's a bunch of mess. So no, um, more than likely, I'll just do the um, depot shot. I've never tried that before, so we'll see how that works out. And I'm not really upset that I didn't get the two hoop. It's just that it's the reason why that happened. And I'm not going to push it out the way because I know when God does stuff, he does everything decent in the order. It's not a bunch of chaos around it. And it was too much chaos around the tubal. And I was like, uh, I can't afford to get sick. I got four babies to look after. You know what I mean? I'm not going to go out of my way to have some an elective surgery just because, you know, when it's not necessary. So I'll probably just do the depot shot and I'll keep you guys posted on that when I do my checkup. But um, yeah, so in the hospital, I didn't get much rest because everybody and mom kept coming in there. Not even my family members. None of my family members came to visit me. None of them. They stayed where they was at, which is cool with me because I was really upset with them anyway. But um, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> but um, my kids came. Well, Big Armor and the boy, the little boys came. And then Amir came. And then Amir was so excited to see the baby. So it was a nice little family moment. And the doctors and the nurses, or well, the nurses specifically, kept coming in. I got to check your vitals. I got to check his vitals. He needs a bath. Um, what do you want for dinner? What do you want to eat? What do you want for lunch? What do you want for breakfast? My phone kept ringing. Um, you got to pay your uh, copay. Um, you got the birth certificate. I'm like, girl, I might as well go home for all this foolishness. What is what is this? So I had him early Monday morning. I stayed Tuesday, all day Tuesday and Wednesday. They was like, well, you can go ahead and go since you ain't getting that tubal. <laughs> so I was like, okay, cool. So um, the day I spoke, the day I left was the same day Malachi got his um, um, circumcision. So. I had to wait for him to pee, and he peed, which is fine. Make sure everything's working. I have to get a circumcision. And then we went home that day, and then it's like that. And then um, I get a lot of comments saying that, oh, my gosh, like, you seem like you just bounce back so quickly. And a lot of that has to do with me um, having experience. This is my fourth kid, so I kind of know what to do. I, I know how to deal with the newborn. I know how to kind of train them a little bit. And, you know, and it's like I had a routine before he came, and I really couldn't stray from the routine because the kids are creatures children are creatures of habit if you start changing their routine they get ugly and irate and out of control so i try to keep the routine as best i can so the routine allows me to still my, my routine before i had the baby included me um maintenancing myself so i was always able to do my hair get up and get dressed i always set time set away time for that and i kind of missed it and it's kind of like i just when i don't do my hair or get dressed like put on clothes it, it bothers me. I feel dirty. So I have to like, I just keep my routine. And I'm a, I'm a true Capricorn at heart. I'm extremely meticulous. I don't like change. I don't like a bunch of mess. Okay. It's like, this is what we're going to do. And that's how it's going to be done. And that's the end of this conversation. So <laughs> I, I just had my routine and um, that's what works for me. And yeah, so that is my labor and delivery story. It's not, you know, that's not too dramatic, but like I said, a lot happened in that small two-day um, time frame, but he's here. You guys saw him in the video, and if not, I'll post a video below for he's here, that video. Um, you know, I also get a lot of questions on me vlogging. Okay, here's the thing with that. You guys have to understand that my channel focuses on hair, makeup, and fashion. My family is not um, something I want to put out there. I'm not interested in being criticized on, on my parenting skills or what I do with my kids because that's just my business. Um also, how am I going to uh, have a camera around toddlers? Girl, my camera be jacked up, beat up somewhere. Okay, in a, in a corner shivering. <laughs> I can't. No, this blogging is not going to happen. Um, out of the 400 something videos, 450 videos that I have, I have maybe 20, 15 to 20 of my family. And that was a lot of that was before Skype, before I started Skyping, because I would put up videos of my kids so my family in Atlanta can see it. And that's the only reason I would do that. So now if you see them here and there, it's just because, you know, they happen to be here or they happen to walk in. But I don't really put my family out there like that. I'm not interested in vlogging. So you won't see any vlogs from me. Sorry. You know, <laughs> but you get to see me. But, um, yeah, that's it on that. So I'm going to go ahead and go. And thanks everybody for watching. Um, add me on Facebook. Add me on Instagram. Check out my blog. Uh, tweet me and thanks everybody for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye